Greetings, everyone. Today we are talking about discipleship in the local church. I'm your host, Wayne Griffin, here at Always Reforming Ministries. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Theology in Real Life, where we take heart knowledge and head knowledge and apply it to everyday life. In this episode, we are demonstrating discipleship by addressing personal sin, encouragement for signs of growth, and working through the importance of local church membership with a new believer. If you want to obey Jesus Christ by making new disciples, stay tuned as we sit down and do discipleship in real life. So, Michael, how has Christian community had an impact on your life? Uh, I would definitely say it's done a lot. Uh, it's brought, being part of the Christian community has brought me clear understanding of what it means to be a Christian, uh, learning right. w- learning worship times um, by encouragement and observing, uh, watching, watching other followers in Christ um, in their homes pray before dinner and uh, sing worship after dinner and doing doing the little things that they do to bring to bring worship and glory to God and their daily habits even at home uh, I've visited several members of the church after homes and ate dinner and and spent time with them and yeah and as a newer person in Christ watching these other people and how they and how they introduce their kids to Christ it's created a big change in how I change and how I um, worship and praise God at home with my with my family. Right. Um, you know, they they it's just a great strong encouragement um, and the encouragement to prayer, worship, um, and uh, and walking right. You know, trying the best I can to walk righteous and live with repentance every day, with the accountability right. of brothers and sisters in Christ. Right, knowing that repentance and um, any good thing that we do is the Holy Spirit working within us, enabling us to do, right, what God mm-hmm. now has given us with new hearts, well, now that we want to do, right? Now yeah. the challenge is to do God, to, to do the will that um, we desire to do, and that the Christian life is, um, that defines the Christian life, is now the difficulty is doing what we want to do, which is to do God's will, to serve Him, to to avoid sin and can kill our sin, and all of these things, it's, it's just the Christian life is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, before diving more back in, uh, into the church and Christian community, um, as um, our discipleship relationship goes and we continue, God continues to you know, use um, His church and our, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that we have based on our, um, based on our commitment and our our new hearts having believed the gospel um, um, by putting our faith and trust in Christ alone um, for salvation and being changed by Christ um, how I think it's important to do a you know like checking in and, and checking in on, on each other's hearts as we talk about how to make disciples you know it's we've now that we've believed and um, we've been given new hearts and we're saved um, you know, Jesus's command is in Matthew 28 is to make disciples. So, um, how, how would, how would you say this over this last week, as we try to do this weekly, um, at at the, at the very latest bi-weekly checking in with each other, Mm -hmm. how has your heart been over the last, um, over the last week? Um, I know I missed you on Sunday. I was part of a, a French church plant, Grace and Truth Church in Athens, Ohio, uh, very first service, uh, a good reformed Baptist church and, um, a, a, it was just a beautiful service to see. I'd never been a part of like the first service of a church um, ever. So, but anyway, I missed you, so I didn't get to check in with you. So, how's your heart? Um, any struggles with the family, or just how are you doing? Um, it's been okay. Um, you know, I sure. I definitely have been kind of not been on top of uh, doing my personal reading time in the Bible as much as sure. I would like. Um, you know, since I picked up the second job, it's not exactly a, me trying to get adapt to all those things and trying to get my schedule together appropriately to take care of my family, especially with my wife being pregnant and trying to get all these adaptations in, in my life right now. It's right. been kind of hard, but 
more responsibility, but yes. doing yes. what you have to do. Yeah. Yes, and trying to build a proper schedule around it and trying to navigate the day-to-days of being a dad and, and a husband is not always easy. As Absolutely not. As we'll all learn and grow, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I think overall my heart, um, it's been good. You know, I definitely feel like my heart shows more love and and um, humbleness towards my children and my family and Good. and others every day. You know, obviously there might there might have been a day where I kind of carried a hint of frustration at either a situation or somebody, but I managed to to look past to past that and still show love and and uh, compassion and be humble towards whatever the situation was. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But, you know, obviously kids can rub you the wrong way and you might Mm -hmm. get a little stern with them and be a little angry, but try not to show the anger. Right. Or it's okay to be angry if they're, you know, disobeying, like, in a sense, but it is not, you know, don't respond in anger as far as, like, allowing it to sin, right? If there needs to be discipline, let it not be out of anger, right? But knowing that the the discipline is also tied into the love because, you know, if we love our children, the Bible tells us that, you know, God disciplines his children. And so it's going to be the same for us. Um, So as far as... What would you say, um, even just in general right now in life, um, I know that you said you'd be open to talk about these things. Like what particular sin uh, is most glaring in your life? Uh, I'll, I can go first. Like for me, um, probably the greatest challenge right now, um, I still think there are um, kind of lusts of the flesh, right? Um, with, and that's and a lot of that. There, God has grown me so much um, over the last uh, six years. Um, but there's still challenges, you know what I mean? Like it's even like being careful with things we watch, you know, you, every Facebook ad or YouTube commercial, you know, has, you know, just sensuality and Mm -hmm. being challenged. So that's something that I'm always on guard on and God's provided much grace, but, um, there's that area of just needing to, um, continuing to be killing that sin. I'm reading the mortification of, um, mortification of sin by, the, uh, the Modern English Version by Aaron Wren, um, it's highly recommended, um, that, which is a book I'll probably, you know, let you borrow after <laughs> reading it. It's, it's really awesome. We'll talk about it. Um, and also, so that, I, that's, there's been, there's been uh, grace and, and how he's continued to uh, kind of grow me in that area. Mm-hmm. And it is with, even this week, um, personal uh, just communion and desiring to be with God and knowing him and prayer. And that's where um, just a small trick for me, because it's so hard for me to get up in the morning sometimes, has just been putting my phone, you know, at the other side of the room and charging it there. So that when that alarm goes off, I'm the first one up. You know, I help my wife get up, and and that's kind of the process that's been happening. And then I have time for prayer and prayer reading. Um, and that's just a routine that's really preparing the way for each day. Um, and I would say, um, so that's probably the number one that I'm, um, as far as sin that, is, that I'm just warring against, and there's been great success. And so that's, uh, it's not a, a struggle, it's just something that I'm completely on guard with. I have accountability partner with my brother Christian, um, and he's at First Baptist Church of Glenesty. And so there's accountability there. And I think another one would be kind of... Um, looking in the future and wanting to like kind of figure things out, right. I'm going to be mm-hmm. finished with my degree and pursuing, um, pursuing a master's degree. And so where, you know, looking at schools and, and in different areas in Arkansas or Pennsylvania, um, school schools online, potentially wherever the Lord's leading. And so sometimes it's wanting, you know, out there thinking about all these things and, and not truly trusting, um, based on my wanting to think through and kind of um, have all of these plans, um, just making sure that I'm resting and knowing that when the time comes, God will make it very clear. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's been doing as long as we're pursuing his will each day um, and, you know, in his word and just pursuing him with our whole heart, um, seeking first him, his righteousness and and his kingdom, all the other things that we wish we knew or had the answers to, um, they just... Um, they're very clear when they come upon you, but it's it's difficult to be patient and wait. And so that would be for me. What about okay. for you? Um, yeah, um, I would say kind of like 
an impulsiveness would be something that I definitely struggle with. Sure. Um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, definitely like you said, lust in mm-hmm. general. You know, um, and whether whether it's on. I mean, I've taken guard by removing Facebook app off my phone and. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll get on the browser occasionally and kind of like scroll through or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I like um, the marketplace. So. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of my goal for whenever I use Facebook, anyways, is look through marketplace over anything sure. else. I try not to. Which could be its own thing. It's a different love. There's a lust for stuff, love, you know, yes. it's the same like that. But yeah. Yes. Um, I, I definitely try to guard myself a little bit so I don't make it to where, you know, I got that big blue icon and I just click and. Mm-hmm. You know, I get lost on going to Marketplace, and I'm going to Stories, and then, you know, I'm going here. Um, so I try to limit that. Um, I'd say I, I definitely generate distractions because the phone can be very distractive in yeah. very many ways, whether it's games yes. on it and, you know, different. I mean, even YouTube can be a distraction sometimes mm-hmm. from doing what you need to do at home. And exactly. So being on guard about these things and being aware and trying to set timetables of, okay, you know, this this time of night or this time of day is a good time for me to spend 20 minutes or an hour, depending on what it is I'm doing on, on YouTube, you know, my yeah. watching a quick, um, a quick little video on, on Christian life, whether it's a, it's a sermon or maybe I'm, it could be on a book that I'm reading in the Bible and, you know, it kind of gives me a different insight of those quick little snippets. I'm sure you see, you know, yeah. I'm talking about those yeah. quick little five, 10 minute videos. I'll talk about a chapter in the Bible or, right. you know, so, um, but even then, like, you don't want that to be overwhelming from what God has stewarded us, especially for you, you have a baby on the way here soon and I have kids right now. And, you know, so he stewarded us with children. And so we still have to be mindful that we can't, we can't overlook our children that God has protect, you know, has given us to, to raise, to love him and, and bring glory to him. So it's setting an example, but not doing too much to set an example. So there's a balance and yeah, that's one know. of the hardest things for us is balance. What I find that I'm finding in the Christian life, it's easy to kind of, you know, say, Hey, I, I jump over here on this type, this ditch over here or, um, or on this other side over here, rather than like the Bible saints in many places is, um, kind of a balanced, which which mm-hmm. requires faith and requires God's help. Moderation in all yeah. things that you do. But, but I think what you're saying, like as far as you know, studying God's word, pursuing Him, and, and growing in the knowledge of grace of Jesus Christ is one of the most important things that we can do, right? Mm-hmm. But really, obeying God and everything is is the most important thing we can do. So as far as it, what I mean by that is is that god's god's word and his will is is perfect so when he says you need to be able to love your wife you need to be able to do that and you need to you know study the scriptures to make yourself approved right Mm -hmm. so like you we have to be able to do both of those things um but you know i think and that's in that and because your study for of the word is it's your love for god and you want to know more about him so there's a there is a balance but like you know our first we're talking about church this is a perfect segue in yes our first church is our own family Mm-hmm. So it's going to be your wife, your kids. Um, it's going to be my wife, my future child. Like, so that, that is our first church. If we are failing in that area to love our wives biblically and lay our lives down for them and our kids biblically, then nothing else that we do outside of the house matters. Exactly. You know, that's the very first place. Um, it's, it's, it's the things that even make you qualified to be able to, to teach others as far as like what scripture says or um, really anything. God is concerned about he looks on the inside, so and he's gonna he's gonna look on the inside of your home, and those are the priorities first and foremost. Is yes. like, am I loving my wife? Um, am I um, doing the best I can with with my children? Am I loving them by loving their mother and disciplining them and, and making my household really uh, a true picture of of love that that comes from God's love for us? Yes. and that's uh, that is the challenge. But that that that's where the balance comes in. It's saying, okay, well. These things are first, if, but if I still want to do this, then maybe I do have to get up at four in the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe I go to bed at 11, I'm up at four because I need that much more time. And as I read um, Power Through Prayer by Ian e. Bounds, um, mm-hmm. highly recommended, um, he talks about all of these different saints that God used mightily that were getting up and, you know, getting up four, four in the morning, five in the morning. Um, and spending one or two hours in prayer, like so. If your family's getting up at six, you might need to get up at four, and that's 
it, w it would be infinitely worth it to spend that time with God and just the, the energy that he provides and the protection and just the joy of knowing him has much more value um, than, um, than things that we can do by mustering, trying to get up with our family, kind of rushing and doing all of that. And even on the back end of like after, after everything is over and it's just kind of the challenge of that. Um, so as far as talking through those things, so this past week though, though, you know, I see that those are the main glaring things. Um, what would you say, um, is what, where's, what's an area that God is most working in your life right now? Um, I would definitely say being able to, uh, bring more worship in my home. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, um, being, being more prayerful in my home, being more, because uh, I've noticed, especially recently, like, you know, I've, the more I've prayed with my children, it seems like they have grown in appreciation for God. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they know who God is. They know what God has done. You know, you right. can ask them and they'll answer you straight up. You know, God made me, God made mommy, God made daddy. You know, so they know what God has done. You right, know. that's good. Yeah, you're teaching them, raising them up to teach them um, to know God and to love God, and um, th that's that's essential. Yeah. And seeing the change in their hearts by, you know, praying before dinner, praying, you know, um, we're, I'm trying to get it to where we're praying before every meal. Mm -hmm. So we're taking, you know, steps at a time, but that's good. sometimes the kids get a little excited and they're a little over hungry and... <laughs> so I sometimes I forget, you know, to hold back the the because what I do is I'll put their plates in front of them, but I'll keep the sil I'll keep the silverware to after sure. prayer. Yeah, you know, so that way, or I'll I'll leave something specific off the meal that I know that they that they won't touch it until it's on there. Yeah, so that way we can pray. Right, you know, so that way they can under that way they can gather the understanding of hey, like. You know, we have to pray before we eat. So daddy ain't going to put this on our plate right. until we pray, you know. Right, and you got to start wherever you have to start. You know? Exactly. Because this is new for, you know, this for you, and it's new for them. Mm -hmm. So um, going through the journey together, it's like, hey, we're going to, in our home, we're going to have a posture that's geared towards thinking upon the things of God, acknowledging him as God, um, loving him learning about him and, and just this this is our focus our, our number the number one commandment is to is to just to love God like love the Lord your God you know with all of our heart soul mind and strength um, that's all of us and the key word there's all with all mm -hmm. of that therefore that includes giving thanks for our meals um, and that's so you're it, it's that's that's encouraging to me to see like yeah it's it doesn't matter where we are it's it's about what steps can we go to where we're more faithfully doing exactly. what God has called yeah. us to do. This is a high calling. I've just been, you know, called out of uh, darkness into light. And now it's, it's uh, now my desires are to follow God. And, and that's difficult, but you take steps. And so that's, that's beautiful. So keep it up and encourage you with that. I'll be praying to that end for you with your family and continue that, uh, that work. Yeah. I mean, I'm really, like I said, I'm really impressed with how my kids are adapting. I mean, cause as we all know, it was kind of like a whole 180 a year ago. Right. And slowly, God has worked in my heart to add different adaptations in my life. You know, it went from before me and Elisa got married that we we remained abstinent once we came to church mm -hmm. and until yeah. we got married. You know, yeah. so and we actually talked about it. You yeah. know, so we we stayed abstinent and and that way we could and we slept separately. You know, we still slept yeah. in the same room, but you know, I would right. sleep on the floor, she slept on the bed with the kids. Doing the best you can. Doing the best right. we can to yeah. keep temptation at bay. Right. And still love one another. Mm -hmm. And that strengthened our relationship, relying more on God to bring us together than relying on each other to bring each other together. Right. You know, so, and just seeing how God has worked so differently in my life and what he has done, you know, through the church to, to bring these changes, you know, like, yeah. Like you and me just having a conversation a couple of weeks ago talking about, hey, you know, you should be trying to worship or, you know, worship every day, you know, sing a song of, of hymns to, to God and read yeah. the Bible every day with your kids and do a prayer, you know, and it's just like, 
my ongoing question after you said that was, well, how can I, you know, bring worship in my home? You know, I mean, we listen to a lot of Christian music together yeah. and we sing together, but mm-hmm. there's a difference in that and actually singing a hymn. Yeah, and there's know. and like when you read when you're reading scripture, asking them the catechism questions in there, like, um, and like I said, I mean that's it's something if you want to put like right away, you, you can borrow the book or whatever. I know you said you want to buy it. Yeah, um, I, well, I might do is I might take a picture. Couple. Yeah, yeah, do that because then you can just read through it on your phone and just uh, I can actually I'll make a copy on the copier after this. That way, yeah, that would be perfect. Um, so that is. Reading the Bible, reading your Bible on your own, that that's worship, you know, mm-hmm. um, being a good steward of your finances the best you can, that, that, that's worship. Loving your wife is worship. Reading your Bible, um, teaching your kids, you know, encouraging, um, uh, giving thanks to God before our meals, like all of those things are acts of worship. Music is, of course, you know, God loves music. So it's um, all just really all of our lives, everything we're doing all the time is we're worshiping something, right? Yes. And we're supposed to do all the things to the that we do to the glory of God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that, yeah, for I think First Corinthians ten thirty one, you know, which it, I think the verse you're gonna be oh, yeah. your, your business yes, that yes, you're gonna yes, model, yes. That, which is no matter what we do, um, you know, do it all to the glory of God. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Theology in Real Life. So. Are you seeking to address your own personal sin in your life? Do you have an accountability brother or sister in Christ? What steps can you take to make sure that you are doing these things? Our prayer is that you will meditate on these things and bring them to God. And please join us for the next episode next Friday as we continue exploring what God has spoken about the local church and the believer's responsibility to her. God bless. Thank you.